Um, yeah, so I've got a couple random comments asking me um, how did you come into Islam and everything and I made a video about this a while back but I since took that video down because I became hijabi and I wasn't wearing hijab in that video so... But to quickly summarise everything that I said in the last video I came into Islam uh, around three years ago when uh, just before my 21st birthday whilst I was at my final year of uni and the reason why I kind of came into the religion I think in the first place was because I saw like uh, my two best friends at the time were Muslim and for throughout the three years that I've been friends with them, I saw like, you know, them as really, really amazing people. And I was like, well, wow, they set a really, really good example for Islam. And like, if these people are so amazing, then I guess I want to, I want to like learn about their religion if they say that like, this is a really big part. And I feel like things in general, like when I would ask myself existential questions, like where do we go after we die? What is the purpose of life? What is the meaning of life and everything? Like I really was searching for these answers and I felt quite like empty inside. I mean, like the Everything I was just doing in my life back then, I was just not very proud of and kind of did without thinking about the consequences. Um, and for me, Islam provided all of those answers and so much more. Like Islam is the single most important thing in my life that has given me meaning, that has given me purpose, that has completely like changed my perspective on the world. Um, and I'm so, so grateful, alhamdulillah, that I've come into Islam now so early, so like so young, like I was blessed to come into Islam so young um and obviously there's more things I think you know over the course of three years I started to think about the idea of like religion and God and um it was from a very much like a holistic point of view I wasn't really concerned about the rules and the regulations of what is haram what is halal at the start it was more about just developing your own personal relationship with God and then all the rules and stuff became after um and because I had done that conditioning of the heart I think um, like at the start all the rules and regulations became like easier I think in my opinion and yeah there was more things but that in summary is how I came into Islam and a lot of people have asked how like my family took it and how my parents took it so um, if you didn't know I'm half Colombian half Chinese and my parents were separated so I kind of had to come out to both sides of the family like at different times so my mom's side of the family they were amazing they didn't really say too much about it they were just like okay cool yeah whatever and I was like okay great and they took it really well alhamdulillah but like then my dad's side of the family, who many people might know, like South American people, um, Colombian people, Latino people are more often than not Catholic. And I don't know, it was much, much harder to come out to that side of the family. Um, mainly, there's a couple people in particular that I can think of that I was so terrified to tell. But um, after, after a while, after a rocky start, they eventually came around to the idea of me just being Muslim. And after a while, the next hurdle was you know, telling them that I wanted to put on the hijab and they were like, ah, oh, but, you know, alhamdulillah, they took it really well after, you know, working on it for a little while. Um, but in essence, that is a really short summary of how I came into Islam and my journey and everything. And uh, yeah, hope that. It's actually a really crazy story because subhanAllah, I hated the Islam so bad when I was younger. Um, because the Dutch news, the European news, they make it seem like uh, the Muslims the Islam, they don't like the Kafir, the the, the non-Muslims. They make it seem like Daesh is the true Islam, you know, like killing the non-Muslims, for example. So that's why I hated Islam. That's what the, the news taught me. At one point, I grew older and I start thinking because I've always been interested in this subject. Um, I, I kept thinking to myself, if the, if the Islam was really this bad and they want all the kafir to be dead, the non-Muslims, I'm sorry, the non-Muslims to be dead, then why are we still alive? Because there are so many Muslims. So I started doing my research and I, I find out like, oh my God, this religion is actually so peaceful and it's so beautiful. So at that point, I started surrounding myself with more Muslim people around me. And at one point, I became so interested. Uh, a Muslim girl, she sent me a big box full with things from the Islam in it. So a Dutch Quran for me to read the Quran. Uh, this, for example, 123 Hadith, uh, the book of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him everything hijab prayer mat everything and that's when i converted that's when i said the shahada i say the shahada i'm in my room alone at night i didn't even go to the mosque um because in holland it's holland you know you you didn't grow up with the islam next to you i didn't feel acceptance even though 
Alhamdulillah, I have great friends. They accept me for who I am. I'm happy I can talk to them and they will always accept me. But when I came to live here in Tunisia, it became so much easier for me to follow this religion. Um, because you just feel accepted because everyone around you, almost everyone here in Tunisia is Muslim, you know? So, yeah, I think that's a little bit of how my story went. It's not in a lot of details, but it went like that. And subhanAllah, I'm so happy I came across this beautiful religion. And I'm so happy I turned my head around and like really researched everything before I started hating something that I didn't even know, you know? Um, so I, I really think that was with a meaning that I hated it. I needed to hate it to find the beauty in it. You know what I mean? Yeah, alhamdulillah, I converted. it. And alhamdulillah, I'm living in Tunisia to make it more easy. Okay, y'all. I'm trying so hard not to make this a two-part video because I hate two-part videos. So I'm going to talk really, really fast. Try to keep up. Okay, so 2019, I was struggling with my Christianity and... Um, just I wasn't feeling it. There was Jesus was not in my heart. And I met some Muslims who kept on making references to Islam and to their culture and things like that. And I was just curious. So I bought a book and I was reading the book. It's just a history of Islam. And um, it took me a while to get through pre-Islamic Arabia because that's really boring. So now it's probably the spring of 2020. And um, I was dating my now husband. And... Uh, I kept on asking him questions. And so finally he says to me, just go get a copy of the Quran and read it. I'm like, okay. So I did. And one day I was reading the Quran, which is a hard read by the way. And that feeling, that, that feeling of God just, just kind of hit me. And I'm like, oh my God, where's my Bible? And so I run and get my Bible and I open my Bible to my favorite chapter and start reading. And the feeling just kind of fizzles up. And I'm like, so this happened like three or four times and then I finally start connecting the dots that it always happens when I'm reading the Quran and it always fizzles out when I put it away. So I'm like, that's not what God's trying to tell you. Like that's, you are not interpreting this correctly, sweetheart. Like there's something else because I was a Jesus loving, like firm Christian. Well, then I got to the chapter in the Quran called Miriam and it's about Mary, the mother of Jesus. And it talks about Mary and it talks about Jesus and like how the Quran views Jesus. And basically it's, Jesus was not the son of God. He was a prophet, a wonderful prophet. And all of his teachings are wonderful and valid and great. And I'm like, wait, I can have Jesus too. So I sat on that for probably a month or two and I did some research, just Googling things and, and different stuff like that. And then I finally was just like, okay, I, I guess it is what it is. So I think it was June of 2020. And of course everything's closed at this time. So um, I just, I said the Shahada to my husband and I converted to Islam and it wasn't what I was looking for, but it's what I needed. Assalamu alaikum everyone. So in this video that I posted here, I got a lot of requests asking for my journey to Islam and how I started practicing when I started university. So throughout my life, I didn't really practice Islam. Um, I went to like predominantly white high schools. I didn't really have that many Muslim friends up until I started university in 2017. So when I started university, I met a lot of Arab and I also met a lot of Muslims through my Arab friends. And one of the things I remember in my first year was my Muslim friends getting up to go pray and me sitting there and making excuses as to, oh no, I already prayed or oh no, I can't pray right now. When in reality, it was because I didn't know how to pray. I had known before, but I had just forgot because of all these years that I wasn't practicing. And this was kind of like my light bulb moment as to be like, Okay, but why aren't I like why aren't I praying? Why aren't I prioritizing my salah? So I actually reached out to my best friend and asked her if she could help me remember and teach me how to pray again. And slowly, alhamdulillah, I went from one prayer a day to two prayers a day to three to four, all the way to five in a span of a few months. And ever since then, I have been praying five times a day, alhamdulillah. 
I won't lie, in the first couple of years, I had a lot of trouble waking up for Fajr. Um, but alhamdulillah now, get up every day for Fajr. You know how it is. And when I say I wasn't practicing, it was mainly just the Salah. I still dress pretty modestly. I would fast in Ramadan, but then again, I wasn't praying while I was fasting. So there was just a lot of like, you know, bumps in the road. But in this point where I started actually focusing on my Salah and realizing that, you know, I've neglected this for so long, I started to think, you know, I'm not very educated on my own deen. And so ever since then, I've been taking steps to learn more about Islam. I started reading the Quran at least one page every single day. And honestly, having Arab friends and Muslim friends around you who share the same values as you is the biggest help because they will push you to be a better Muslim. And I cannot thank those people enough. And I cannot thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enough for that experience of me feeling so out of place. So subhanAllah, like in a, in a matter of like months, I went from zero to 100. And I had never found so much peace in something. And by no means am I saying I know everything now and that I'm a perfect Muslim. I'm just trying my hardest in every single day, trying to strive to be better. So today I'm going to go ahead and try to do my reader story. It is kind of long, so if it takes several parts, I am sorry. Um, but growing up, I, I didn't know much about religion, to be honest. I follow what my parents said. We went to church every now and then, or like when we had like a quinceanera or a wedding, and we had a beer for the church. And also like the traditions, I guess, for Christmas, you know, celebrating baby Jesus and the posadas. So that was pretty much it. I didn't know much of it. Um, around high school, I started getting anxiety, and I think it was ninth grade, and I always admired how my friends were always so on top of their game, they knew everything about religion, they, anything you would ask them would kind of like respond right away, and I didn't know, I felt like an outcast, I felt so lost, I felt dumb, I felt like, I don't know, I felt like maybe I didn't belong here, you know? And I also didn't know who God was, to be honest. I didn't know who any, anyone or anything meant. And I reached out to my friend and I told him, I was like, hey, I'm having anxiety, this and this. He's like, okay, you just have to devote yourself to Jesus Christ and let him take part or lead the way. I was like, okay. So on this day, um, I, we went after class and he took out a piece of notebook paper and he was like, you know, just write down this and whatever. So I was like, okay. On this day, I, Eileen Contreras, devote myself to Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. And I was kind of like, well, what's next? And then he's like, well, you're saved. Like, that's that. I was like, oh, okay. Um, I tried reading the Bible. It didn't make sense. I I'd honestly never made sense. Um, it felt like I was reading blank pages. And I tried reading different versions. I thought it was just the versions that didn't make sense. But no, nothing clicked. Um, so I downloaded like daily Bible verse reminders. So I was like, okay, well that counts as something, right? Obviously I didn't. Um, around my junior year in high school, I met my best friend. Um, she is, she's Muslim and I admired her and her friends. You know, they were always, they're always on top of their game. They would pray and they were wedding job, which is what I admired the most. They look so beautiful. And also during like the month of Ramadan, I was always very, very curious, and I was like, well, we have Lent. It's kind of the same. It's not. Uh, I tried to fit in, but I was like, I was too afraid to gain too much knowledge because growing up, it was very, very taboo if you even seeked or like looked into another religion, according to my grandparents. And I remember it always took out something that my grandma once told us as kids, if you, know, if you even go into a Christian church, you're going to hell. So imagine going to hell for just going to a church. My grandma once told us as kids, if you know, if you even go into a Christian church, you're going to hell. So imagine going to hell for just going to a church, literally converting or like seeking another religion that's not Catholicism. It's like, whatever, I just like put it to the side. I thought they were just like thoughts. Well, last year I got really into it again and I wanted to keep learning about it. And I seeked out to my friend. I asked her if she could give me more knowledge, and she did. Um, bless her soul. 
She's been with me throughout my entire journey. And so what we did, we did FaceTime calls. And this was during the month of Ramadan last year. And we would do FaceTime calls. And she, very, she always told me from the very beginning, you know, I'm telling you this to teach you or to like educate you. And you know, if at the end of the day or after at the end of this like journey, you're like, hey, it's not for me. She said, it's completely okay. My feelings aren't gonna get hurt. It actually helps me. So I was like, okay. So we started, she broke down every single FaceTime call into such ease. Like she would make like each top, each day was a uh, different topic. And um, so we started, and I remember from the very first time she spoke and everything, like everything just clicked. Literally everything made sense. I had no questions, which was, I was like, maybe she thinks I'm like not asking because I'm not interested, but literally everything clicked and it just made sense for like the first time in my life, I, I understood everything. And so that happened and then, um, she said oh, well you know go ahead and buy this english for and she said go ahead and read it so it's like okay and then i would read it and then sometimes i would like ask like write down my notes on my notes and ask a question and be like okay once we facetime i'll cut and ask this question and i kid you not i'll write down the question and as soon as i would turn the page my answer was right there and it's it just amazed me like it like it was kind of like freaky in a way and um I even fasted during the during last year and it was just like okay and honestly everything started to make sense or started to fall into place and i knew i wanted to convert i was just very very afraid and i told my friend i was like hey i'm i want to but i'm not ready yet. and she said that's completely fine take your time uh july 5th of last year um i was in my last mm, semester of nursing school and I, the whole back of my head went completely numbed. I thought it was a tumor or a cancer. I started freaking out. I got rushed into the ER. And there I was in so much panic because all by myself. I was literally all by myself. In so much panic because all by myself. I was literally all by myself. I didn't have my mom. I didn't have anyone with me. And when they took me to go do a CT scan, I broke in front of the nurse in the, or the tech, I can't remember who it was. I literally broke down in front of her and I felt so debilitated. I felt so stupid because I was like, how am I about to be a nurse? And here I am crying in front of this lady to hold my hand because I was so scared. So I lay down and I'm literally shaking. I thought I was going to fall from my from the wheelchair to, to just laying down. I, I was completely shaking like head to toe. So I lay down and I was like god like if you're here with me and like everything is gonna be okay and i know you're not gonna leave my side give me a sign i said give me peace let me be calm i said ease my anxiety every ease every feeling that i'm feeling right now and i kid you not as soon as i was done saying it i felt so much peace in my heart and it's a peace that i've never ever felt and i was like okay i was like it's my sign not only like that i need to convert and then after that um i texted my friend and i told her what had happened and i was like i'm ready i'm really really ready but it doesn't feel right if i go and convert without you by my side since you know she's been my teacher this whole time so she she luckily she flew down uh around that month she doesn't live in houston and you know, we went to the masjid, I took, I, I took Mashahala and that's it. And that's how I became a Muslim.